Hey, good morning, Jerry. Good morning. <clears throat> the presence of God. Glad to have you with us today on a beautiful Tuesday morning. Even though it's dreary and cold and uh, freezing rain outside right now, it's a beautiful day because the Lord has made it. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to PTPOG. How are you this morning? So glad to have you with us. And I uh, trust that you had a good evening on yesterday things went well for you the lord is blessing us i appreciate so much you being with us on a daily basis those of you who support us and uh, who seek to listen and hear and uh, just receive the word of god on a daily basis it's such a blessing isn't it it's such a blessing listen guys I'm going to be having a giveaway very, very, very soon, okay? I'm going to be having a giveaway very, very soon. And uh, I'm trying to find what it is I'm going to give away. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give away this incredible book here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's called Words of Life. It is a daily devotion, and it is uh, put on by Columbia Union Conference Press. Uh, it is an incredible book. Uh, I really don't want to give, to give it away, but I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. And here is what I'm going to do. I will ship this to you for free. Uh, but here's what I need you to do in order to get this book. In order to get this book for free, I need you to go to our YouTube page, and I need you to subscribe to our YouTube page, okay? I need you to go to our Practicing the Presence of God YouTube page and subscribe. When you do that, you will have a chance to enter in to the sweepstakes to get this book shipped to you for free. Amen? I'm going to pick somebody, and here's what I need you to do. I need you to go to this video or any other videos that I'm putting this uh, uh, putting this contest on, and leave a message. I need you to leave a comment down below. That's what I need you to do. I need you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then I need you to leave a comment on one of the videos where I am showing this book, specifically this one and the subsequent ones that I'm going to bring out uh, the next few uh, days here. So we're gonna do this contest for the next uh, week, week and a half or so. And at the end of that week and a half, somewhere around the 15th of January, I'm gonna pick somebody who subscribed and who left a comment on our YouTube channel. You do those two things, okay? I will definitely send you this book after I pick one of you, okay? All right, all right. So listen, God bless you, God keep you as our prayer. Let's get right into our word today, which is found in the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter 29, and we're looking at verse number 23. Proverbs chapter 29, and we're reading verse number 23. Let's see what the word of God has for us today. Proverbs 29 and verse 23 says this, a man, and this is, uh, I believe this is from the uh, modern King James version of the Bible. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Today we're speaking from the subject, the wisdom of humility, the wisdom of humility. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for your love and blessings today. 
We appreciate you being with us on a daily basis, providing for us, caring for us, watching over us and keeping us. Lord God, please, I ask that you would give us this day our daily bread. Give us our daily bread today, for we need it, Lord. Your bread is from the word of God. Your word is a lamp to our feet, a light unto our paths. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. What is pride? Pride is arrogance, self-centeredness, the desire that drives all of us to basically think of ourselves over and above everybody and everything else. And what this text is telling us is that pride is actually a burden. And this is an incredible thought, but it's true. Pride is a burden for us to carry. It is baggage. It's that extra, extra bag, right? That you're going on this trip, you and the wife or you and the kids are going on this trip and you know, you got the car packed tight. I mean, you're like sardines inside of this thing. And you got this one big, huge bag that you got to get in there, but you can't squeeze it in. It's just too much stuff in here, but pride. It's that extra bag, that extra piece of luggage that tries to come in and you got to tie it to the top of your car and you're looking like an idiot <laughs> driving down the highway, going to the airport with all of these bags and you just shoved in like sardines, like I said, like olives squeezed inside of a glass jar. You're just trying to get to the airport and it's just too much. It's too much. That's what pride is like. It's too much. It's too much. Pride truthfully takes over your life. And it gives you a baggage that you really, really, really find difficult to deal with. It's amazing though, so many people take trips <laughs> with this baggage on a daily basis because pride weighs you down and it brings you low. And King Solomon warned often and consistently against this pride, this arrogance, this conceitedness, if you will. He had the most wisdom and wealth and power and he was also an attractive king. And he had the most wives and the most, uh, you know, princesses, if you will. But he still blasted pride as an evil that destroys men's lives from the inside out. He warned his son and his citizens over and over again about the dangerous destruction of pride. His many repetitions in the book of wisdom declare very loudly and clearly that this subject is a lot more important than people anticipate. And it's often overlooked, especially today. It's amazing today, the amount of pride I see thrown around, <laughs> even religious circles. It's unbelievable. People just living with this high arrogance, conceitedness, and it's amazing that today <clears throat> people are even celebrated for their pride. This is terrible. We must learn and recognize that pride is baggage. It weighs us down. And Solomon makes this point over and over again. In Proverbs 16 and verse 18, he says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than with the divide, than, than it is better to be with a lowly spirit and with the humble than to divide spoils with those who are prideful. That's what Solomon said in Proverbs 16, verses 18 and 19. Watch this in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse two. Here's what he says again about this idea of pride. He says, arrogance comes 
then comes shame, but wisdom remains with humble people. He says that arrogance comes and the next thing you know, here comes shame. <laughs> you see, here's the thing about pride. Pride is like this baggage that has its own baggage with it and you didn't realize it. It's got an extra bag hanging on, tied on to it. You didn't even realize it. You putting it in the car and here's a, what is this tied to this bag? It's a whole nother heap load of baggage. You didn't even realize it. It's called shame. Huh? It's called embarrassment. Lord have mercy. When you have pride, you are gassing yourself up to ladies and gentlemen, be embarrassed in just a little while. It's like a balloon. You know, my wife just recently had her birthday and they blew up several balloons. You know, balloons, you know, they're, they're beautiful, they're wonderful, but they're just itching to get popped. <laughs> have you ever noticed that? <laughs> balloons are beautiful things to have. They're wonderful, love them. But it's just like you see a balloon and the first thing you wanna do is pop it, <laughs> right? And that's how pride is. Pride is like that. Pride has a tendency to draw this, <laughs> you know, these attacks to pop this bubble that people are blowing up in their own conceitedness, in their own minds. It's an amazing thing. Proverbs 18 verse 12 says this. Again, he repeats the same kind of warning. Before destruction, a person's heart is arrogant. Proverbs 18, 12, but humility comes before honor. Here's what he says. If you want to be honored, if you want to be raised up, if you want to be lifted up, if you want to be acknowledged as somebody of value, he says, learn humility. That's what Solomon said. Learn humility. So I want to make this point this morning. How does pride take us down? How does pride weigh us down? Well, conceit leads to bad decisions, but humility leads to hearing good counsel. Pride, how does it weigh us down? How does it pull us down? How does it tear us down from the inside out? Well, conceited pride leads us to make bad, uninformed decisions but humility listens to good counsel. Notice with me Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 15. Proverbs 12 and verse 15 says, a stubborn fool considers his own way the right one, but a person who listens to advice is wise. A stubborn fool considers his own way to be the right one. That's the problem with pride. Pride makes a person believe that they're right even when they're quite possibly and most probably wrong. But a person who listens to advice is wise. In other words, a humble person that's acknowledging I don't know everything. Huh? I don't know everything. How many of us know we don't know everything? <laughs> How many of us realize and recognize, you know what? I don't know everything. I wish I did know everything, but I don't know everything. And in order for me to know that I don't know everything, I have to be humble. I need to learn humility. Somebody say amen today. So watch this, we talked about before on yesterday, the tendency for fools to speak too hastily out of anger or frustration, right? We talked about people being overly emotional and having this tendency to just open up their mouths and say whatever comes out of them. Well, this text that I'm about to uh, uh, declare to you in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 16, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 16, this text tells us that it 
comes, this, this concept, this, this urge to speak out before time, to speak hastily, speedily. It comes from pride. It comes from pride, arrogance, and an overconfidence in oneself. That's where speaking hastily comes from. That's where it comes from. It comes from pride. Watch Proverbs chapter 14, verse 16. A wise one fears and departs from evil, but the fool rages, the fool rages in anger and is sure or is confident in his anger, in his frustrations. Verse 17, he who is soon angry acts foolishly. And a man of wicked plots is hated. Mercy. You see, the person who acts out of anger is foolish. And the person who acts out of anger that's foolish is usually somebody who is filled with pride about whatever the situation or the subject is. They are prideful. They believe that they are right. They don't take any time to listen or hear from anybody else. All they are concerned with is getting everybody to hear what I have to say. So ladies and gentlemen, pride. Pride is something that we really need to get rid of, amen? Notice with me, how will pride take you down Point number two, how will pride take you down? First, it'll take you down because you don't listen to other people. The second reason why pride will take you down is because God hates pride. And God will make sure, God will make sure that your pride won't get you where you think you're trying to go. Notice with me Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16 is from the Marvin King James Version of the Bible. It says this, these six things Jehovah hates. Yes, seven are hateful to his soul. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Now we've talked about this before. Very, very... Uh, <laughs> Quite a few months ago when we were coming through Proverbs chapter six. But the first thing on the list of the things that God's soul hates is pride, a proud look, a lying tongue. You see, those two things go together. Pride is lying to oneself. That's what pride is. That's what pride is. I was uh, watching a news story, I think it was last night, where uh, the Proud Boys, I don't know if you've ever heard of this group, but there's a group, for whatever the reason is, they've decided to call themselves the Proud Boys. I don't know what they're proud of. I don't know why they call themselves the Proud Boys, but I do know that they have a, a tendency, for whatever the reason, to just kind of cause agitation. Uh, and for whatever reason, they were protesting uh, against some of the COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Uh, I think it was in Minnesota or somewhere. I'm not sure where it was. But, uh, you know, they got loud and boisterous and they started kind of arguing and fighting against the police. And the police had to humble them and push them back and throw tear gas at them and shoot them with pellets and all of this kind of thing. Now, is there anything wrong with protesting? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But you shouldn't throw stuff at police. You shouldn't spit on police and the things of this nature. And once again, why are you calling yourselves the pride boy? Pride goes before a fall. That's the last thing you need to call yourself. We don't need to be proud because God is against the proud. That's what it says. Notice with me, Proverbs 16 and verse five. Everyone proud in his heart is hateful to Jehovah. 
I'm, I'm going to read that again because you need to know that. Proverbs 16, verse 5. Everyone proud in their heart is hateful to Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. God says, if you're full of pride, I don't care if you got people joining hands with you in your pride and in your arrogance and in your, you know, self-aggrandizement. He said, you will not go unpunished. God says, if you are full of pride, you must be punished. That's how pride brings you down. God is against you. How many want God to be against them? I don't want God to be against me. I want God to be for me. <laughs> Come on, say amen. Notice with me, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 25. This is from the Good News version of the Bible. I like the way it reads. The Lord will destroy the homes of the arrogant and prideful men, but he will protect a widow's property. Isn't that something? God makes it clear whose side he's on. The Lord will destroy the homes of the arrogant and the prideful, but he will protect a widow's property. Presumably the widow is humbled in her situation. And so God is drawn to the humble. That's what we see. The antithesis of what we've just said, God hates the prideful, but he loves the humble. And this is the wisdom of humility, that God is drawn to humility. He's drawn to those who have a lowly spirit. It's very clear in the word of God. God will bless. Here's the next point. God will bless and lift up those who are humble in spirit. Notice with me, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 33 through 35. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 33 through 35 says, the curse of Jehovah is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scorners. What are scorners? Scorners are people who complain and murmur because they're arrogant, prideful, conceited, and believe that they know better than God. That's what a scorner is. A scorner is a person who refuses to acknowledge the presence of God, the power of God, the grace of God, the reality that God is even real. They're scorners. God ain't going to do nothing to me. There is no God. I can do what I want to do. Be careful of that proud, prideful position. But he says this, but he gives grace to the lowly. Talking about Jehovah God. He gives grace, the Lord God, to the lowly. Verse 35, the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. The wise, presumably the humble, shall inherit glory, but shame will be the promotion of fools. You looking to be promoted in your pride, in your foolishness, in your arrogance? God says, the only promotion you're going to get from me is shame. Hello, somebody. But God comes close to the lowly and the humble. Watch this, Isaiah chapter 57 and verse number 15. This is from the Good News Bible, says this. I, but I am the high and lowly God. This is God speaking. I am the high and lowly God who lives forever. I live in a high and holy place, but I also live with people who are humble and repentant so that I can restore their confidence and their hope. Notice with me, God says, I am the great and marvelous God. I made everything. I created everything and I live forever. He says, I live in the high and holy places. He says, but I also live, dwell with, come close to, connect with the humble and the repentant. Did you hear that? 
He said, as high as I am, as awesome as I am, as incredible a God as I am, I come close to and I dwell and live with those who are humble in spirit and lowly in mind. Isn't that something? So God, praise God, is attracted to humility, such to the point that he says, I'm going to dwell with those who live in humility. I'm going to live with them. I'm going to make my dwelling place with them. Now, that's an amazing thought. God says, I shun the pride and the proud and the prideful and the arrogant. I shun them. I boot them out. I kick them. I push them away from me. And I cause them to receive shame. He said, but I honor, I uplift, I exalt, and I come close to, I dwell, I live, I make my residence with those who are humble, who are lowly in heart who are repentant, who recognize that they are not all that. Somebody say amen today. Notice with me, Isaiah chapter 66, verses 21. Isaiah 66 verses, I'm sorry, verses one and two. Isaiah chapter 66, verses one and two says this. This is what the Lord says, this is from God's word version of the Bible. This is what the Lord says, he, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where can I build a house or a resting place for me? Where can you build a house or a resting place for me? I have made all these things. That is why all these things have come into being, declares the Lord. I will pay attention to those who are humble and sorry for their sins and who tremble at my word. He says, here's what God says. God says, I am the great and marvelous God. I, heaven is my throne. My earth, the earth is my footstool. He said, I put my feet on the earth just to hang out and chill. That's how great and awesome I am. He says, where can you build a home, a resting place for me? He says, I'll tell you where. I'll show up in the heart of those who have a humble mind and a humble spirit who have a lowly heart. He says, that's where I'm going to rest. That's where I'm going to live. That's where I'm going to dwell. You want to build a house for me? Build a house of humility. Mm. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You want to build a house for me? I don't need you to take gold and silver and marble and all of this kind of stuff and put it together in some building to build some house for me. He said, what I need you to do to build a house for me, I need you to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Come on, say amen. He said, I'll live in you. I want to live in you, but I can't because pride has taken up residence. You have to get pride outside of you. Lastly and finally today, ladies and gentlemen, notice what the word of God says in the book of James, chapter four and verse number six. From God's word version of the Bible, here is what the word of God says today. But God shows us that even more kindness when scripture says God opposes the arrogant, but he is kind and generous to the humble people. Are you humble today? Do you understand the wisdom of humility today? The wisdom of humility is that God is attracted to the humble, that God comes near those who are humble and lowly in mind and repentant of their sin. He draws near to them. He's drunk. He, listen. It's infectious. He, he can't stay away from somebody who has a humble heart. He can't do it. He's just attracted to it. Come on, say man. God can't stay away from somebody who's been humbled. He can't do it. Somebody who recognizes the reality of where they are and who they are and what they are and what they need and the fact that they are in need. 
Oh my goodness, God, he, he, he can't help himself. It's just insatiable. He can't take, he can't stop. He just gotta come close. He has to come close to you because God loves, he loves the humble. I wanna pray that God will give you and I a spirit of humbleness today, a spirit of meekness today much like that of his son, Jesus Christ, for he was meek, the Bible says, and lowly in heart. But if we come to him with that meek and lowly heart and spirit, the Bible says, we shall find rest for our souls. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for the blessings of today. Lord, continue to empower us and bless us and uh, just invigorate us with the grace of your spirit, the presence of your word. We thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness towards us. You are an incredible God. And we thank you, Lord, for being a God of the humble. Lord, give us that humble spirit, that spirit of humility, that spirit, spirit of meekness, that spirit of blessing that, that, that attracts your presence in our lives. For we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, <laughs> God be with you. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please like it and share it on your Facebook page or and or subscribe to our uh, Facebook uh, group. Just type inside your search engine right now. Just go right there right now. Type inside your search engine, hashtag PTPOG. We'll pull up a purple icon, much like the one you see behind me. Click on it and you can join our ministry family. If you're watching this by way of our YouTube channel, praise the Lord, God bless you. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And please subscribe, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really, really appreciate it. Listen, I wanna remind you, we've got a giveaway coming. Here it is, beautiful giveaway book, all right? Beautiful giveaway daily devotional. It's called Words of Life. I'm going to give this to you. I will ship this to you for free, but here's what I need you to do in order to win this book and in order to win the contest. I need you to go to our YouTube page, Practicing the Presence of God. I need you to click on this video, leave a comment, and I need you to also subscribe, subscribe, to our YouTube channel. Now, I don't know if you saw this, so I'm gonna put this back up clearly so you can see it. You see that? Isn't that a beautiful book? It's beautiful, praise the Lord. So I want you to go subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment below this video as well as either more other videos that I'm going to present uh, this contest on, okay? If you do that, you will be entered in the contest. I will pick one at random. I will pick one of the comments at random, okay? And uh, you have, but you have to be a subscriber as well. And I will ship this to you. Listen, God bless you. It's going to end probably around the 15th uh, of uh, January, okay? God be with you. God bless you. Have a great and marvelous time in the Lord. I love you. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Peace.